When they first brought out laws to regulate ultralights, I decided to retreat into wind turbines. So I started gluing and cramping wood together. And I had a go at making electricity from the wind. Seemed should be pretty easy. Take an alternator off a motor car and equip it with a turbine rotor and a tail and let that swivel to face the wind. I thought it should be easy. But although I was able to get the rotor to spin plenty fast, I wasn't making much electricity. So I started thinking about step up ratios. Because the Mark I needed 25 miles an hour of wind just to run its own exciter circuit. It wasn't very useful. So the Mark II scored itself a stringy bark tower and with a 2 to 1 step up ratio golly gosh gee darn and shucks the Mark II had so much extra starting torque it still needed 25 miles an hour to get the damn thing running. Wasn't it a lovely tower? Tie wired together out of stringy bark. The Mark III was an 8 foot diameter rotor 3 to 1 step up ratio and it actually only required 18 knots of wind to run its exciter circuit and there we are using a 60th of a second shutter speed to figure out that it's doing 179 revs a minute. High tech in its own way. And the Mark IVa with a 4.5 to 1 step up ratio and a 6 foot diameter high pitched rotor and it needed 20 knots of wind Here's the Mark IV-B, which was about as successful as this version ever got. The 3.6 to 1 step up ratio. And yeah, it would run itself in 15 miles an hour of wind. And at 20 miles an hour of wind it might make 100 watts. And it might make 200 watts at 25 miles an hour of wind. It had a little 5 watt bulb to cut down the exciter circuit losses. And with the Mark IV-C, I also had an omnidirectional wind speed sensor switch to turn the alternator on and off. Which I'll show you in a minute when I'm going to show you some Super 8 film of this thing running. Okay, so now we're going to have a little bit of a blast from the Super 8 past. Isn't that amazing technology? Mobile phone on a tripod filming a Super 8 projector giving you a glimpse of 1986 when I were a wind turbineologist this is 15 to 25 miles per hour wind speed. And there on the lower right you can see the omnidirectional wind speed pressure sensor. One terminal is on the central wire. The other terminal is a copper ring around the wire. It doesn't matter which direction the wind comes from. The two discs at 90 degrees to each other will be blown downwind and the circuit's completed. That energizes the exciter circuit when there's enough wind to ideally be able to produce electricity. Here's a special shout out to Muddy Muddy Mud Man. Tell me Scott, you climb up the pole and watch your windmills this close? I was an enthusiast in 1986. Very proud of myself too. Here we have 25 miles per hour plus. The tail's furled. That little light is the exciter circuit bulb drawing 5 watts of current to limit the losses. And as you can see, when it's got magnetic drag to fight against, it takes a while to unstall the rotor. 
even when there is a bit of wind. Now as that little light goes out, it means the exciter circuit is being completely self-energized and the wind turbine is producing electricity. The two-bladed stroboscopic blur indicates 1,200 revs per minute. And I used to climb up there and observe it closely. When we get to the end of this Super 8 antique vintage movie segment, I'm going to show you an artifact that demonstrates just how foolhardy I was in my bravery. Here we have it from behind, backlit. There we go, 1200 revs a minute. CJ Wharton's Aero Enterprises, Aero Physics, Engineering, Research and Operations. A long time ago. And here's another blast from the past, just for the kiddies who've never seen ancient technology. So old, you've even got to rewind the film after watching each reel. I bought this thing when VHS video recorders came in. I got the camera and the projector for about $250. Here it is 25 years down the track and the technology still works. Now I did say that I promised you an artifact which would show just how brave and foolhardy I was to go climbing up the pole. This is what's left of that particular rotor after a bearing failure one day in a 40 mile an hour wind allowed this blade to run into the wooden support tower while I was at the foot of the tower attempting to furl the tail and turn it out of the wind and I forgot about gyroscopic precession and all the stored energy in the rotor disc made itself felt 90 degrees later in the direction of rotation and it pulled the bearings straight out of the pillow blocks just pulled the bolts and the washers right through the blocks so isn't it good that I wasn't up the pole observing closely the day that happened? To the sky power, Mark 4C. The day I suffered an exploding windmill. Brought to you by CJ Wharton's Aero Hillbilly Enterprises, PO Box 418 Gleninus. New South Wales, Australia.